it's Ben from Dash 9 Computing and today I am going to be working with the ESP32 in the capacitive touch. And I'm going to be making something like, here's a quick little teaser, whoa, what's that? I don't know. We'll find out. So it's kind of neat, the little um, GPIOs, there's pins along the edges of the ESP32 and some of them are touch sensitive. I can detect if something's touching it. So what can we do with that? I think we can do some fun stuff. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's the code. Um, the original code was by Sarah Santos. I should probably comment this out, otherwise it's gonna break the script. I just wanted to throw that in there to give, you know, props. Um, uh, I've changed it quite a bit, well, not quite a bit, but a lot to get it to work with Adafruit and to do more than one pin. So um, basically here, if you touch pin 10, this says light up um, GPIO 13, which is what the LED is connected to. And again, the same thing for touching five turns on the LED. Um, here's that constant threshold. Uh, the value when you're not touching it is about 8,500, somewhere in there. So anything over 9,500 means you're touching it and we wanna take action on that. Um, here's the variable for storing the pin value. Uh, we turn on the backlight, that's more of the uh, display for the Adafruit ESP32 TFT feather that I'm using. Uh, and then here's uh, initialize the LED pin as an output. Um, and then I wrote a loop instead of just doing one. That way, I mean, the one idea I had was <clears throat> make it like a game controller, hook some wires up and then, you know, some buttons and you could say go left, right, up, down, do different actions uh, by touching it. So um, on this one, so if the touch value is less than the threshold, you'll keep the light on. So it stays on if it's high. And then if it goes, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's, it goes on if it's, yeah, if it's below that threshold, if it goes above the threshold, it'll turn the light off. And then there's a little delay, and then here's the loop of the second one, same idea. And that's it. Pretty simple, and I'm going to try to integrate it into a project. Um, it's just really handy and fun. So, enjoy. Check it out. Okay, so here it comes up, and see the LED is on. Now if I touch 5... At the right cycle there we go five is off and let's find where's 10 is that 10 right there and there see the light went off and it shows off this left column shows the um, threshold and that's kind of I'll show you the code and how it sort of determines you know how I wrote like well if the code if the threshold goes up that means it's made contact and you can also do it with your finger see how the LED went out it's scrolled off the bottom of the screen but that's the general idea here if I find 10 where's 10 these are a little small, so what I would imagine you'd want to do is hook up a, um, there we go, you'd want to hook up a wire to it and, a, you know, a switch or something like that. But this could be used for gameplay and, um, I don't know, all sorts of things. It's kind of cool. So here is some code I'm calling ESP32 Touch Sensor 4-Way uh, .ino, and it's um, doing the usual, uh, including graphics libraries. And the idea of this script is to create uh, pins 10, 9, 6, and 5. Here we go, 10, 9, 6, and 5, so that they correspond with an up, down, left, and right um, concept for like a controller. So I'm doing this on the Adafruit as well, of course. And this, uh, so a little peek ahead, so we can just ignore this line for the moment, but basically I set the uh, threshold to 9,500 um, per the last script. Um, I'm changing it to 25,000 a little bit further along, um, and you'll see why. Uh, so basically now, so I create four pins, I assign them, I assign them this value, turn on the screen, and then create a loop, up, down, left, right. So instead of two loops, there's four. And for up, it says, I'm not saying anything if it's not being touched, but if it's being touched, you know, trigger, go and just print the word up, for example. And in the future, you could say actually trigger an event where a character would move up on a screen. Same for down, left, and right. And that's it. Very simple script. Let's see it in action. Okay, so I've uploaded the code. Uh, and I've changed it so that we have four different uh, things. So this is the right. So to go right, left, down and up so that's pretty cool right so that could be neat to make a controller in a game i guess you'd maybe want to have a shoot or something too depending on the game oh i'm not pressing the right ones there we go 
Sweet. So the next phase of this is to create some artwork and create a game. Now, this is just artwork. Um, I grabbed the code from Brett B. Up here is the URL. And it's based on the example library that comes with um, the Adafruit TFT displays. I had to make some changes to make it work with mine, as you will see. And we'll just kind of go through the code. I will post it, but we'll kind of go quickly because it's long. So declaring you know, my, my TFT display and graphics library. This is the actual one I'm using for my uh, Adafruit ESP32 TFT feather. Um, here I had to redefine the colors. You'll see the colors start off, start off really wonky. Uh, or I shouldn't say wonky, they just, the, the values did not work for my screen, so I changed all of them. Um, here's the start position. Um, here's some um, characters uh, we're defining, so girders. Um, this game is a Mario, uh, sorry, yeah, Donkey Kong Mario. So it's um, girders and ladders, oil drum, fire, fireball. And um, note here there's fireball right and left. That way that this, uh, it's kind of cool, he made it so the fireballs kind of look like they're moving by, by printing one kind of left, one to the right, and it kind of flips back and forth. Here's again Mario facing left and right. There's the princess and there's a barrel here. Okay, here we're in the setup. I commented it out a lot and I'm turning on my my screen and the rotation I want. Um, filling the screen with black. Okay, so we, we start the setting up uh, girders, ladders, oil drum, placing the sprite. Sprite is a term for like the little character. So princess uh, barrel, it's two barrels in the princess. Um, here's some color related information. Again, I'm gonna kind of fly through. I don't wanna go through every, every last itty bitty bit. Um, you know, we're going to draw some of the pictures, like the balls, and kind of defining some of that. And if it's, you know, if it's facing this way, do that. Uh, let's see, cycle counter to kind of keep track of where he was and where he's going to go. Um, what's this one? Uh, yeah, where to put this on top of the TFT display so you don't have to redraw the display every single time. This is um, a color code. I don't think this code does anything for my screen. So we're gonna move right past it. Okay, here's where you place oil drums. This is interesting, sort of start positions. And here's where you place the ladders. Um, it's a Y, X coordinates, uh, the way it's set up. I just kind of put, my, put a little note there so I got it right. Um, here we set up the girders and I sort of fiddled with this to try to make some of the girders longer. Um, so number one girder and number three girder go uh, uphill. So incline, and I was able to make them longer. Uh, the girders two and four I had going downhill. For some reason, I couldn't make them go longer. I will figure it out. I imagine it has something to do with how it's being defined. I don't know. Again, this is just, I was just poking around real quick. And, uh, you know, just a just a, the start of the work. But, um, yeah, and here it draws the map for the girder. And maybe it's in here. Hmm. Okay, well, something to look at. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, well, it's a good first start, but the colors and the orientation are totally wrong. Let's let's at least fix the orientation real quick. Getting closer, starting to little look a little bit like Donkey Kong, isn't it? Even better. But look at that. What's going on there? Hmm. Mm hmm. Eh, we'll see. Keep on fiddling. Uh huh. Keeps getting better, but still needs more work. The colors are getting much better now that I've been changing them. Getting a little closer every time. So here we are at the very early stages of creating a kind of mini controller. Um, I'm really not using good quality shielded wire. I just grabbed something that looks like basically bailing wire. And I also did something else you shouldn't do is I used painter's tape instead of electrical tape to isolate the wires. Each one is under its own wire. Up here is where the ESP32 is going to sit with the pinouts. And then here is going to be the touch sensors. Now, you have to be really careful not to touch the wires because you will ground them out and you'll probably fry your ESP board. So quickly, I have a multimeter and I'm just going to check for continuity and make sure there isn't any kind of crossover. So I'm just going to put one, this happens to be the ground at the top, and I'm just going to test. And if you look at the number on there, we should see it jump up on this pin. There we go. Oh, let's just test again here. 
Okay, there's a number. Now we shouldn't get anything on here. Oh, I'm touching more wires. I'm sorry, trying to isolate it. Nothing. Oh, I see why, because those two were touching. See, that's the danger. Gotta really keep them isolated. Otherwise I'll fry the board and I'll do something better up top, I think, to isolate them a little better. But there we go, so nothing on that one. Let's try pin two. Pin two here. Nothing. We get some numbers here. That's actually the controlling pin. Nothing good and nothing here would be good. Great. Pin three. Okay, so we have continuity and we don't have any crossovers yet. <laughs> let's be careful. Okay, here's stage two. Now, let's just call this all the proof of concept because this is super hackish. And I don't mean like hackerish. I mean, this is just hackish. I'm using tinfoil, double-sided tape, the wires I'm using, painter's tape, and I'm not even using proper shielded wire. I'm just using, I don't even know what kind of steel this is. Um, and the real danger is when I put it through these pins, I have to be super, super careful that they do not touch, because if they touch, zap. So look at this as a cautionary tale, and who knows, maybe I'll blow my ESP32 up, and everyone can laugh and learn from this dangerous technique I'm using. I really want to come up with something that I'm going to keep from blowing things up up here. Something to think about. But it's coming along, little controller, sort of, touch sensor controller. Okay, let's see what happens next. Okay, we've got it hooked up here. I bent the wires through. Let's just check continuity again, make sure I didn't cross anything. So, good. Excellent, continuity, no crossed wires. Okay, so I plugged it in, turned it on, and look what's happening. They are all lighting up, which um, I expect because the threshold now, there's constant continuity. Something is touching that pin. I can't touch the pins along the top. So we have to change that to increase the continuity of when I touch it. Okay, so I just upped the threshold value to 25,000. It was set to 9,500, so it's now able to handle that there's a connection, it can detect that there's more signal, but now when I touch it, it's gonna create a greater signal, right? Left, down, up, oh, no up. Left, right, down, oh, there we go, up. Okay, this the connection's not great, so I just have to push a little harder. So you could play a game and do, 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 do. Oh, oh, I was still touching some of the tin foil. That's why. Okay, you have to really move your hand off the off the tin foil to do it. <laughs> Should have made this a little smaller, maybe. But that's the idea. Pretty cool, right? What? No, no, this isn't actually a playable game. This is just um, you know, some artwork with movable, you know, little sprites bouncing around. And it has the, you know, it's still hooked up, but there's no code to actually connect the two. It would require a fair amount of coding to get it working, but that is a plan of mine. I'm still a bit of a novice, but I'm going to poke at it and see if I can't get some of it to work. And it's, things still need to be moved around a bit. But future project will be fun. Hmm, stay tuned.